All right, so in this video, we'll be continuing on from the previous video on Selenium, where, let me just open up the website that we've been dealing with. So what we did in our last video is we navigated to this website and extracted the buyer name and the relative prices for each of the uh, items on this page. And what we're going to do in this video is extend the code a little bit more to allow to navigate to the other pages as well and store all the information on those pages and not only just print them out to the screen but store the information into a spreadsheet. So that's what we're going to do and we can actually just modify a lot of what we've already written which again this was from the previous video and the link to this code and also the code that we'll be writing today will be available on my github which the link to that will also be in the description below. So let's start off by importing CSV since we'll be using this to write our results to our CSV file and the first thing that I want to do here is actually go back to the page and just think about for a second how we're going to go through these different pages so in your own situation you might have a code like this where you want to extract information from multiple pages and in this situation what happens is something uh, pretty clear when you click on a page so every time I click on a different page, one thing that changes, you might already notice it, is the URL. Specifically, if you keep an eye on this three-digit number here, if I click on the first page, it turns to 1. If I click on the fifth page, it's, it's 005, and so on. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to cycle through all of the pages that we want to go through, and we're going to want to modify this in a way to have Selenium open the appropriate URL based on the number of pages that we're going to be going through. And we're going to make this a little more concrete as we go along here. So first what we want to do before we do any of that is let's create some variables that we'll be using to help us out. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a max page num, which in this case is 5, since the maximum number of pages in this particular case is 5. But you can imagine that Perhaps we have another situation like this where there's 20 pages or 30 pages and it's easy enough for us to just change this variable here based on however many pages we, we have to be going through. The other thing that we're going to put in here is max page dig or digit. And this is going to be a variable we're going to use a little bit later that's going to help us to uh, modify this specific thing here. So the max page digit corresponds to the number of characters of this thing. So there's a 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, and if it was, let's say, 12 or 13, it would be 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, 2. So there's always going to be three digits here, and those digits are going to change depending on whatever page we happen to be on. And we're going to mo want to modify those and open the appropriate page based on whichever page we happen to be trying to get data from. So again, maybe that's a bit abstract, but we will be seeing that uh, a little bit more concretely shortly. So a lot of this can be uh, tweaked in a way where we're going to just keep the same stuff that we wrote before. Specifically this thing here, we're still going to want to open up a Firefox browser. But before we do anything else, I'm going to comment these things out just so we, we, we don't get confused with what we're running and with what we have yet to write. So before I proceed, before I even open up the browser, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a CSV file. So I'm going to say with open, I'm going to store our, our results in something called results.csv and we'll basically just prepare the CSV file where the header of this CSV file is going to have two columns. So the first column is going to be the buyers column and the second is going to be price. And I'm going to throw in a new line as after that new line we'll be storing in our information. So we're going to have something that looks kind of like this with a spreadsheet where buyers is one column, price is another, and then we're going to have the name of the first person with the price corresponding to the price of the first person, and so on and so forth for the other entries that we grab from the website. So we've prepared the header on our CSV file, and now what we're going to want to do is we're going to loop through our pages, and we're going to modify the URL appropriately, um, so that way we can grab the information from those pages. 
So we're going to loop for i in range from 1 to the max number of pages, plus 1. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to define something called page num. And this variable is going to change uh, every single time we cycle through. So we're going to start at 1. In this case, we're going to go up to 5. And what we want to do is we want to change it so that way we have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, whatever. If it's single digit, it could be a double digit where it would be 0, x, x, where x is the number that we care about. So we're going to define this variable page num. And we're going to define it in this way, which maybe on the surface is a bit opaque, but I will describe it once I write it here. So what is this line doing? Well, what I'm doing here is I'm defining, so we, we know the maximum number of digits we're ever going to have is 3. And what I'm doing is I'm subtracting the length of the string of the number that we're on. So for instance, the length of, let's say, the string 1 is just 1, and the maximum number of digits is 3, so we take away 1 from that, we have 2. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be multiplying by a factor of the string 0. So what does that mean? That means I'm concatenating this many zeros onto the front, or I'm padding this many zeros onto the front of this. So this is the string i. So this is the particular index that we happen to be on. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying pad the string i, so the index that we're on, by an appropriate number of zeros. So let's just print out page num to make this very clear. And I'm going to comment this out so the Firefox doesn't open. So if I go through this loop here, I run it, what we have here is we have the uh, 0, 0, 001, 0, 0, 002, all the way up to 0, 0, 005. And again, as I mentioned, even if we took this up to, let's say, 20, ran that, we wouldn't have two zeros padding this. We only have one, the appropriate number of zeros, because we've multiplied by a factor of this string of zero here. So this is kind of doing the appropriate padding so it doesn't overpad these ones that consist of two digits. So it's a bit of a verbose line for something that does something so simple, but that is what it is. And so what we're going to want to do now is we're going to define a variable called URL. And this is going to be exactly the URL that we want to get with a few modifications. So we have this URL, which corresponds in this case to the first page. And what we want to do is we want to mo modify this thing here. So we'll just break that off and concatenate on page num. So if we do this, print out the URL, then what we should see is the appropriate, well right now there's 20 of them, but we see, we see the appropriate URL where this is the only thing that's changing here, this number is the only thing that's changing, and it's added onto the uh, URL that we want. So I'll change this back down to 5, get rid of this print statement, and the next thing that we want to do is we want to actually have the browser open up the page. So we saw this in the previous video where we say driver git, and in this case we're passing it in URL, which is the string that we're modifying here. So the next thing we want to do is get the buyers and the price, and that's actually going to be more or less the same as before. So I'm just going to copy that from below. So again, we, we've extracted lists of buyers and prices, which are extracted from the web page by the XPath. So every time we go through this, we're going to open the URL, and we're going to define these, these things uh, essentially new every time we extract another page, replace these variables with the buyers on that specific page, and then we're going to do something with those. So what are we going to do with those? We're going to write them to a spreadsheet. So what we want to do is pretty similar to what we're doing down here, where we're looping over these things. But this, if you remember, this particular piece of code was responsible for printing out the buyers and the prices. So we're going to do something similar. So we're going to use this here, and we're going to write the buyers and the prices to a CSV file. So I'll say with open results.csv, so this is the same CSV file that we wrote the header to up here. We're going to append as f, and then what I want to do is I want to loop through the uh, the buyers and the prices and write the appropriate 
uh, entry of buyers, the textual entry of buyers and prices in the row that we're going through in the spreadsheet. So I'm going to loop through just like I did here for the printing for I and range the page items. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say f.write buyers of I dot text. And then I'll append on a comma since this is a comma separated file. Prices of I dot text. And then what I'll do since this is the end of that row, I'll put on a new line character. So this is very similar to what we had down here where we were just printing it out. Really the only thing that I changed was the uh, the string here, which is converted into a comma, and this is now f.write instead of print. So not too much of a change there. Let me just get rid of these extra comments here. And once we've gone through this loop, we're going to end at the last page, and then we're going to close the driver. So let's actually run this and see what happens. So if we run this here, let's see we have a driver is not defined. Uh, I think that's because I haven't actually oh, I commented this line out. That would be exactly the reason why. So let me uncomment that line. Let me try and run it again. What we should see is Firefox pop open and then we'll see it navigate through these pages all the while it's actually writing them to a spreadsheet. So in this case, if I opened up the, I think this was on my desktop, there's a results.csv file. If I open that up, let's see, I think that might have been an old one. Let me, actually that was something that was result.csv. So let me open up the appropriate file. And if I do, we see that the names and the prices are stored just as they should be. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you liked this flavor of tutorial, uh, you know, specifically web automation, scraping, extracting data, these sorts of things, I'm happy to continue doing these types of videos. Uh, just let me know in the comments below. If you found this helpful, please let me know as well. And if there's any improvements or uh, any suggestions you have for future videos, I, I do take them very seriously. So please let me know in the comments and thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.